Well, here we are. Three weeks into the college football season. Well, technically four. But you know what? You know what I mean. You know what? It's officially the end of week three. Yeah, San Jose State Hawaii is still technically going on right now. It's about two o'clock in the morning. And you'll be seeing another video from me in about 11 hours. So, and you, you guys might know what it is. PLL Championship. I'll just get that out the way right now. I'll either be very, very happy or very, very pissed at, at, during that PLL video in about 11 hours during the halftime of the NFL games. I'll just tell that. I'll just tell y'all that right now. Um, and you may know why. But we got to go over this week. This week, people said, "Hey, it's kind of light this week. This this three top 25 matchups." But other than that, you know, there's a lot of teams that respect the coast and no teams did not coast. This is looking very, very sus. This whole year is looking like shades of 2007 out here. And it is going to get even weirder, man. I can tell you this right now. It's going to get even weirder these next couple weeks. You know, these next couple weeks look kind of light on paper. But it's going to get weirder. And I'm definitely going to be here for it all the same. And Alabama... Though they did beat Florida by two points, you know, Florida missed some kicks and botched a two-point try, but their run defense, Alabama's run defense showed some holes, and at times it felt like Bryce Young and company couldn't get it done on offense. You know, they had three straight touchdowns, and they were up 21-3, but once Florida started to stop them a little bit, you know, Alabama just couldn't get anything going, you know. I mean, again, they only had... 10 points after that, you know, after those three straight TDs, they only had 10 points after that, so there's still some kinks getting worked out for Bama, so we all thought, a lot of people thought, you know, Alabama's going to go through Florida, they're going to beat up Florida, they're going to dominate Florida, but Florida came with a game plan, and it really, really showed, and now there's something that a lot of SEC teams, you know, because there's going to be a lot of good SEC teams, you know, in the West this year. And they are coming for Alabama later down the line. And we're going to have a lot of good matchups coming soon. Because I, I thought, you know, you know, I think a lot of us thought, hey, maybe Bama will just coast through the season. That may not be the case, man. That may not be the case. But Georgia, Iowa, Texas A&M, Arkansas, Michigan, and Ole Miss, they take care of business. These teams are fine for right now. Georgia seem to find themselves they found themselves in the offense a little bit you know but they got to do it against better opponents though you know South Carolina and uh, I forgot who George oh UAB yeah South Carolina and UAB don't really move the needle for me so you know got to play better against teams like Clemson and we'll talk about Clemson in a moment but um Michigan though Michigan Nine straight touchdowns? Okay. 373 rushing yards. Okay. Okay, Michigan. Y'all trying to scare me now? My goodness. So that, 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 that is a recipe for success right there. And Matt Coral. Seven touchdowns for Ole Miss against Tulane. Yeah, I did say Tulane would be a tricky, tricky team, you know. But um, Ole Miss, again, they took care of business. 61 points. My goodness. 61-21 Ole Miss over to Lane. But we gotta get we gotta get to the meat of we gotta get to the real meat at this, you know, you know, th this day. You know, let's talk early in the day first on Saturday. You know. Oklahoma, Nebraska. This was a game where again I said in, in my preview video, I said Nebraska is going to have to, you know, keep Oklahoma off balance. And that's exactly what Adrian Martinez and Scott Frost did. They kept Oklahoma very much off balance. And I think if it weren't for that DJ Graham interception, which was great, by the way, what a great interception, you know. And I know Lincoln Riley joked about it a little bit. You know, you know, I don't think you should joke about an interception that could have sealed the game essentially right then and there. But. 
you know, if it weren't for that, and if it weren't for all those missed kicks and really bad penalties, refs were awful pretty much all day in every game, especially in the, um, you know, especially this game and a couple others I'll talk about here. But, um, you know, Oklahoma, not a top three team. Can, can we can we put that narrative to rest? I've been thinking Oklahoma is at that point to where they're going to lose a couple this year, and I think a lot of teams I think a lot of teams might lose a game this year. I'm at, at this point, I think even Alabama will lose a game this year. Uh, in all honesty, I mean this has been this has been this is shades of 2007. Very very sus for everybody. Just everybody does not look good. It, it does not look like we even have a Heisman favored anymore. You know, sure, Bryce Young can throw four touchdowns or whatever easy, but you know, at times he's still not he's still a young quarterback. Don't don't give him the Heisman just yet, please. Don't y'all say that. Don't y'all say that. And Spencer Rattler, uh maybe 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 I shouldn't have said anything about Spencer Rattler, you know, a month or two ago. I, I shouldn't have said you know Give Rattler the Heisman, like a lot of people, uh, like a lot of other people said, just because he's like one of the few guys that was returning that were favored to win the Heisman, and that was stupid on me, really stupid on me. Just like my college football playoff predictions are probably gonna look stupid on me. That's why I don't usually do those. I don't usually do predictions, but it is what it is. And you know what else is what it is? Florida State, oh and three. Arizona, oh and three, and Arizona lost to Northern Arizona, another FCS opponent, along with Texas State. Good job, Texas State. You lost to Incarnate Word. Oh my goodness! You know the Southland is not that. The Southland just got decimated. You can't do. You can't lose like that, Texas State. Arizona's just bad, but Texas State lost to a team in a conference that just got basically decimated by the whack returning. That's how bad it is. That's how bad it is. Florida State, you know, maybe, I don't know what's wrong with Florida State. I, I really don't. Maybe Mike Norvell should go back to Memphis. Maybe he should. I don't know. I don't know, man. But, um, yeah, uh, again, let me talk about those refs again real quick because, um, a terrible targeting call in the Cincinnati Indiana game. It was not a targeting call at all. Um, the Indiana linebacker, I forgot his name, got pushed into Desmond Ritter, and I don't, I don't know. That was not targeting. He, he, he wasn't trying to intentionally do it or unintentionally do it. He wasn't even really targeting at the quarterback. We got to change that targeting rule real fast. Eliminate it entirely. In all honesty, I'm I'm tired of it. Thank you, Jadavion Clowney. Thank you for putting this horrid rule in college football. My goodness. But Cincinnati, they struggled real early against Indiana. You know, you know, Phoenix and company. You know, they were they were doing their thing. They were driving down the field against Cincinnati. But you know, once Cincinnati put the clamps on them, you know, a punt return touchdown, four turnovers. Oh boy. Cincinnati was able to get out of there with a 14-point win, and that is a big boost for this Bearcat team. Big boost, getting a big W in a tough environment. I mean, that, I mean, it looked like a pack house out up there in Bloomington. I'll tell you that much. I mean, Cincinnati now they have to keep focused because you know, big bad Notre Dame, or at least they think they're big bad Notre Dame because they're not big bad Notre Dame, and I'll talk about. You know, not big bad Notre Dame because they're little Notre Dame. But, but, but that that that'll be for that'll be in a couple minutes here. Um, the ACC Coastal talk about chaos, real chaos. Uh, we're talking Virginia Tech was down twenty-seven to seven against West Virginia, and they came back, but they fell short with a bad pass. You know, at their own four yard or rather at West Virginia's four yard line. The end of the game, rather unfortunate there. Um, Miami just gets outclassed by Michigan State. We're talking the Eric King was in and out of the game. Michigan State was driving up and down the field on them. Miami finally gets to get out the top 25 like they're supposed to because they were never supposed to be ranked in the first place, just like my Texas Longhorns. 
do not stop ranking USC, stop ranking Miami, stop ranking Texas. Eventually, we're gonna have to stay stop ranking Notre Dame. But you know, can't say that yet because they haven't lost yet. If it weren't for Kyron Williams, you know, I don't think Notre Dame would be you know sitting pretty right now. You know, that big play by Kyron Williams at the end of that game against Purdue, you know, and put Purdue away, even though they only won by 14. I mean, it is what it is. You know, same same thing applies to North Carolina. They pulled away from Virginia, but Virginia scored 39 points on them. Can't have that. Cannot have that. Both these teams are going to play each other soon, North Carolina and Notre Dame in a, in a uh, primetime game later on down in the season. You know, and I mean, both these teams just can't seem to put anybody away. You know, North Carolina already has a loss. Notre Dame is looking for one. They're definitely they're, 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 Notre Dame is looking for a loss. They're looking for it real bad because they played like trash. And Ohio State has played like trash too. If it weren't for Travion Henderson putting up over 200 rushing yards, I believe it was like 270, like broke like the single game record or whatever. You know, I, I don't think Ohio State will be sitting pretty with a 21-point victory over Tulsa. In fact, this game probably should have been closer, but Tulsa struggled a little bit, you know, you know, on some plays, you know, once Ohio State got some momentum. Same thing with the Minnesota game. You know, Ohio State had some momentum late, and it, it just ended up with the 21-point victories. That's the same logic applies here. You know, Ohio State looking very, very suspect. And I just don't know what's going on with this Buckeyes team. Even even Stroud didn't play very well. You know, he had an interception. He had only a, I think he only had like a passing touchdown and an interception. Uh, if I saw the stat line right, but I mean, Ohio State just not looking like you know a top tier team this year. Clemson's not looking like a team that's going to be you know in the CFP at all. Uh, they're they're due for another loss. And again, like I said earlier, I think a lot of teams, I think everybody in in the FBS is probably going to lose a game this year. In all honesty, I think I think that's going to happen. I think I really think so because Clemson really really struggled with Georgia Tech. You know, if it weren't for the lightning delays that that was two hours long, it, but I mean, if, forget about the lightning delays. Georgia Tech being completely incompetent. You know, really saved Clemson. They, Georgia Tech just being completely incompetent on offense saved Clemson, saved them very, very well from getting embarrassed and getting their second loss in three weeks. You know, that, that would have been very embarrassing. That would have put Clemson out of the picture. You know, we could have took Clemson out to the pasture like the rest of the ACC and put them to rest. Talk about a conference that's gonna get put to rest real quick in a minute. But um, what I'm thinking, what I'm thinking here, you know, down the line, you know, it may be even tomorrow when when the AP poll comes out and when the coaches poll comes out. I honestly, rather go with the coaches poll at this point because I mean Oklahoma State got a victory against Boise State, so you know it's good, it's good stuff. But Oklahoma State, you know, they got a win against Boise Rutgers. Yes, Rutgers. Oh yes, Maryland and Michigan State. I think these four teams may be coming into the top twenty-five real soon because they're looking really, really interesting. You know, Tua's brother Talia, you know, at Maryland he had a crazy game against Illinois on Friday night. You know, same same crazy logic applied to that UCF Louisville game with. Even though Dylan Gabriel got injured with a broken clavicle, but I mean it's okay. It, it's it's I don't think a, a surgery is required for Gabriel, so you know, tough luck to him. You know, hopefully he gets better real soon. At, but that interception return for a touchdown at the end of that game by Louisville, man. And I thought Louisville was dead to rights because I mean Ole Miss whooped them. You know. At, uh, on Labor Day, I mean, Ole Miss whooped Louisville. They 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 beat them up real bad. I mean, Louisville got the job done on Friday night, and you know Friday night was a little bit crazy. But again, both those games on Friday night, Maryland, Illinois, and UCF Louisville were just crazy, crazy games. Um, and obviously the game of the week, the other game of the week, yeah, 
um, aside from Alabama, Florida was Penn State, Auburn in a tough environment. And again, I'll talk about the refs here again because the refs here were SEC refs and they were not good, not good in this Penn State-Auburn game. And, you know, Sean Clifford, he, he finally, you know, he finally had something going. He finally got it going. He looked like a quarterback that could be poised and ready to make a run at, at bigger aspirations for the Nittany Lions. You know, but if it weren't for there was some there was some mistakes by both these teams though that really were costly. And one of them was Penn State's near interception of Bo Nix that got dropped and Auburn botching kickoff return that got recovered by Penn State. You know, uh, both these teams made big mistakes in this game. You know, I really think that they did. Refs were bad, but it still turned out to be a thriller. It turned out to be a great game. Whiteout and Happy Valley. Man, that you don't beat that type of environment. We need more of those SEC Big Ten games like that. That was just juicy, just absolutely delicious type stuff right there, man. I mean, my goodness, we're 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 definitely gonna get some more quality non-conference matchups. I hope in the near future. I have to check all the schedules and stuff out like that three years into the future, especially 2022, 2023. You know, next couple of years. But man, man, what a great game between Penn State and Auburn. Penn State pulls it out, big victory. Auburn's likely gonna top, drop out the top 25, but they'll be lurking. They'll be lurking like, you know, Auburn teams sneakily do because Auburn's a sneaky team. They're, they're never the type of team to go really away at all. So, you know, got to keep an eye on the Tigers of Auburn. You know, got to keep an eye on them. But the Pac-12, on the other hand, can't keep an eye on them anymore. And it's likely that very, very soon, I think, <laughs> we're going to have videos that are going to come out a little bit earlier on Saturday, so I did. I did say that. I did say that it was gonna happen very, very soon, and it looked like you know, it looked like UCLA was going to you know take care of business against Fresno State for two seconds, all of two seconds, because that that completely threw out the window when Flor we rather when Fresno State, not Florida. Um, Fresno State, on the other hand, had Jake Hayner play. Like like he like he was winning the national championship out there. I mean, Hayner got hurt. He it looked like his ribs were broken. It looked like he was out of breath, and he still got a big touchdown drive for Fresno State at the end of that game. I think it was like 75 yards in 40 seconds. My goodness! I mean, UCLA had blasted this man. They 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 had they hit they, that man was looking hurt. Hayner was looking hurt out there. And I mean UCLA's defense just wasn't there because I mean Hayner was throwing darts, he was throwing dots all game long, and UCLA just couldn't stop him. They couldn't stop him. I mean, at one point they were down what 23 to 10, couldn't stop him. Could not stop Fresno State. And if it weren't for a couple, ba again, you know, it was the same bad plays that played Fres that played Fresno State against Oregon, the fumbles, you know, that kept UCLA in it. You know, but I mean, come on, that that was a crushing blow for UCLA, and it didn't stop with the Bruins. You know, Arizona already lost again, again. Like I said, Arizona, you know, just an awful team. You know, and I mean, Arizona State on the other hand, they were not ready for the environments. Another whiteout against BYU. They were they were, you know, were not ready for that environment against the Cougars of BYU. You know, Jaron Hall may have got injured at the end of that game, but BYU was able to close it out against Arizona State and get a third Pac-12 victory. And despite all of that, you know, Pac-12 is pretty much done. You know, I, th I thought, thought, you know, it, it would last a little bit longer this time, you know, but premature ejaculation, I suppose, for the Pac-12 conference. It, and it even comes with a Clay Helton firing. Yeah, good stuff right there. You know, finally. I, I ran it about it, and, and look at what happened. UCLA you know, loses. Arizona State loses. USC fires Clay Helton. 
and, they, and, and I mean, USC, you know, they got a victory against Washington State, but that doesn't mean anything really. You know, it's it's Washington State. You know, they're, 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 now, they're not good. They don't have Mike Leach anymore. They have Rolovich, and he, he, he's just a... Apparently, Washington State um, alums and stuff like that don't really seem to care for Rolovich. It doesn't really matter. You know, USC is pretty much out of the picture themselves. Arizona State's out of the picture. UCLA is out of the picture. The Pac-12, pretty much in its entirety, is out of the picture because everybody except for Oregon has a loss. Yeah. It's about that time, you know, where I can finally, you know, get these videos out earlier in on Saturday night instead. That that'd be that'd be great. That'd be real great because you know, this was rough. This was a real rough blow for the Pac twelve tonight. And, you know, I mean forget about the ACC coastal. The Pac twelve as a conference though, just ugh just dirty. Just I mean this was this has only been a week since Oregon beat Ohio State. You cannot have this type of stuff happen. I mean, there's still a chance, there's still a great possibility that UCLA can keep their momentum up and Arizona State can do something. Definitely not commit so many penalties, but you know, do something better. And USC maybe could you know cover and Washington could get an offense. And Washington State could just get out of their own way. And, I mean, it, it's just a whole conundrum of things that are completely wrong with the Pac-12 right now. Even got a bunch of Pac-12 after dark games next week. Um, and I will talk about one of them. One of which, of course, involves Oregon. But that that's for Tuesday or Wednesday or whenever, whenever I feel like it, it you know. But yeah, we learned a lot. We learned a lot this week. And... We're going to learn some more very, very soon. You know, this next Saturday, we're going to learn some more despite the way the schedule looks. Again, the schedule may look light next Saturday and the Saturday after that as well, but don't be discouraged. We're going to get some craziness as usual. You know, we've had 10 FCS over FBS upsets. We've seen Florida State go 0-3 for the first time since the 70s. And we've seen a lot of teams struggle, and I don't, I don't know why I pick for, I don't know why I like to pick on Florida State. You know, we could pick on Pac-12 instead. The Pac-12 is pretty much out of the college football playoff picture after only three weeks. That's the good stuff right there. That's the good stuff. That's the stuff that makes me love college football, man. And uh, again, I'll see you guys in about 11 hours. You know, we're. I'm going to talk about that PLL championship, and again, you know, college football recap. You know, now you get that PLL championship video in about 11, 12 hours. Then you get the uh, NFL video with the recap for week two, and the college football thing for week number what four, and then week three of the NFL. That 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 that's your schedule for the week. So you know that's all you're getting from me. You're getting five videos this week. So be prepped. I'll see you in about 11 hours, everybody.